Welcome to LTV News. I'm Nikki Olmeyer. And I'm Joshua Smith. Thanks for joining us. This week, journalists Bob Woodward and Carl Bernstein filled up FAU's K Auditorium at the Student Union as the tickets to their lecture, Inside the White House, From Nixon to Obama, sold out. Woodward and Bernstein, along with the Washington Post, were awarded the Pulitzer Prize as they set the example of true investigative journalism. Their investigative reports have revealed government and political issues that remain secret behind closed doors. One of their most popular publications is their first shared Watergate byline, All the President's Men, published in 1972. The book revealed sources that unveiled the Watergate scandal, Nixon's tapes, and in-depth information on the historical political outrage. The symposium at FAU was moderated by Timothy Naftali, former director of Richard Nixon's Presidential Library and is a current senior research fellow at the New American Foundation. In other news, FAU's foundation board appointed three new members, Michael Crowley, Steve Oyer, and Jay Sheen. The board consists of FAU alumni and friends who volunteer to help fundraise and manage the foundation for the benefit of FAU OWLs. The outstanding qualifications of these three new members promise to bring great financial opportunities to FAU that we'll continue to cover. On a different note, the Agora Project is once more on a mission to bring awareness to FAU students on the importance of civility and the responsibilities associated with academic freedom on not just FAU's campuses, but around the world. Doug Stratcher has the insight. Hey Alz, I'm here at FAU's business building to give you a little insight on the Agora Project and tonight's forum, Race and Hate Crimes in America. The Agora Project screening was followed by a Q&A panel with speakers such as Graham Brown, president of the FAU chapter of Dream Defenders, Rachel Lyons, writer, director, and producer of the documentary Hate Crimes in the Heartland, and Rhonda Swan, columnist and editorial board writer at the Palm Beach Post. Dr. Bill Trapani, who is in charge of the Agora Project, explains their goal. Yeah, the Agora Project is a full university-wide effort to raise the level of campus dynamic and engagement and dialogue across campus. What we've learned by looking at a lot of other universities and at trend lines of things like civility and engagement is over the last 20 or 30 years, we've sort of taken our environment for granted. Here at Florida Atlantic, I think we've done a really good job, but we can do an even better job of trying to make sure that everyone on campus feels connected, that they understand the importance of getting engaged. And the Agora Project's role, its mission, is to try to give people the sense that they're at a university, a place where they can really invest themselves. I think it's important, I think it's important uh, for one to story uh, uh, to tell story to tell story The two suspects in the Tulsa, Oklahoma shooting spree have been charged with first-degree murder. This film is about hatred and hope in the United States. It looks at a hundred years of history of uh, hate crime starting in 1921 in Tulsa and ending actually just a month and a half ago with the, um, the change of a death penalty case in Tulsa with these two guys that went in and killed three people in the black community. Both students and faculty were gathered here to watch the documentary and participated in the panel by asking questions about how we can prevent hate crimes in our country. This is Doug Stryker with LTV News. Back to the anchors. Thanks, Doug. FAU's Department of Theater and Dance, with the help of director Jean-Louis Balde, has put on Shakespeare's Two Gentlemen of Verona. This play is about two men competing for love and all the things that can go wrong in the process. But this production has more to it than it seems. Nikki Olmeyer reports. There's no better time to show a Shakespeare romantic comedy than in February. For FAU's graduate theater program, they embrace the themes and creativity of Shakespeare's first ever comedy, Two Gentlemen of Verona. But what makes this production unique? How can you make a 400-year-old play relatable? Well, this was the job of director Jean-Louis Balde. Working in the Department of Theater and Dance for 25 years, gives Balde an edge on understanding what the people of Boca and FAU want. But there is a lot of challenges that arise when preparing for a Shakespeare play, one being language. Shakespeare's text is very difficult generally for common audiences to understand. So our job is to make that, uh, that mode of speech, that language, that complex verse language, 
make sense and connect and be real to a contemporary audience. For Balde, it was important to embrace the authenticity of this play since Two Gentlemen of Verona, to him, is overlooked for productions much too often. We thought it would be really delightful because uh, uh, to set it in uh, about 1595 in its authentic setting, because we don't do that often. Uh, the set is incredibly elaborate, uh, a lot of stonework, uh, and it's uh, Italian Gothic design. So it's just amazing what we've come up with. The performance has been playing in Studio One in the Performing Arts Building since Valentine's Day and has since brought in large crowds and left audiences very pleased. I enjoyed it a lot. It was pretty funny, pretty witty. Uh, I'm not really, you know, I, I come out a couple of plays every now and then. This is nice. Uh, very different from Shakespearean tone, but I greatly enjoyed it. It was really funny. Yeah, I would definitely recommend it to everybody to come check it out. It's this kind of reaction that keeps Balde doing his job. To him, this is the best part of the year. This is not just any production. It is for these artists that are in training at this time. This is a special moment in their lives. And, you know, I've got to produce and work with them and do the most amazing job for them because they're going to remember this all of their lives. Now, if Shakespeare isn't for you, don't worry. They modified parts of the play to fit modern language so they can be as relatable as possible. If you want to see the play, you can catch it on Saturday at 1 p.m. and 7 p.m. or on Sunday at 1 p.m. For Al TV News, I'm Nikki Olmeyer. Thanks for the scoop, Nikki. Attention, jazz lovers. Don't miss out on the opportunity to listen to talented young international composers. They will present their Jubano Jazz performance on March 2nd at 3 p.m. at FAU's Carol and Barry Kay Performing Arts Auditorium. Maestro Aaron Kula is mentoring young composers Eric Benaim from Venezuela and Diego Menderos from Brazil. The concert will feature a fusion of klezmer melodies and Latin jazz. To purchase tickets and for more information, visit the link below. Don't go anywhere because there's still much more to come here on LTV News. And when we come back, don't miss out on the FAU student-run protest that took place on Glades Road to bring awareness to violations of human rights in Venezuela. Also, find out more about FAU student government election debates. And stay tuned for an update on trending social media and sports highlights at FAU. We'll be right back.